Hi everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel on international organizations. For this video we'll be talking about Amnesty International. So to begin with, what is Amnesty International? Amnesty International, or AI for short, is an international non-governmental organization that focuses on fighting and campaigning against injustice to promote human rights. And according to Amnesty International website 2022, it is stated that AI is found in more than 150 countries and territories around the world, and it is united by their determination to work for human rights. How did AI first started? The organization was funded through the effort of British attorney Peter Benison on May 28, 1961 in London. It all started when two Portuguese students who raised a toast to liberty were arrested and sentenced to seven years imprisonment. Upon hearing this horrifying story, Peter Benison published an article in the British newspaper The Observer titled Forgotten Prisoners. This article made headlines as a result, a lot of people around the world call for international campaign to protect forgotten prisoners, which eventually led to the founding and establishment of Amnesty International on the 28th of May 1961. What are the main roles or functions of Amnesty International? Amnesty International operates under three main roles or function to achieve its vision and mission. And these roles or function includes one, research, two, advocacy and lobbying, and three, campaigns and actions. And these functions or roles that AI performs are interrelated and one leads to another. For AI to disclose human rights abuses accurately, quickly, and persistently, they have to get accurate and factual information by doing detailed research on the issue concerned. The first role or function of Amnesty International is doing research. According to Amnesty International Handbook 2002, page 6, what Amnesty International does is that it allows its expert to do accurate research and cross-check the information collected on the issue concern before it publishes reports or lobby complaints against the government or other responsible groups for the abuse or violation of human rights. For example, during the reintroduction of the death penalty in Papua New Guinea in 1991, Amnesty International made further research in ensuring the facts and statistics collected were accurate for them to prevent the PNG government from implementing the death penalty. The second role or function of Amnesty International is advocacy and lobbying. After carrying out research, Amnesty International uses the information collected to lobby governments, groups, or individuals responsible to follow and respect the international laws that are set in place, such as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Through lobbying complaints and advocating, they put pressure on the governments or group responsible to abolish laws that violate human rights, and in turn, they promote laws that respect the rights of every person. For example, after doing research on the reintroduction of death penalty in PNG, Amnesty International published its research report and repeatedly urged the PNG government to abolish the death penalty and to look for other measures to deter violent crimes, as stated by Sakai 2019. The third role or function of Amnesty International is campaigns and actions. Amnesty International performs this function when the other two functions are not effectively followed. As a result, it uses its analysis and information to draw attention to human rights abuses so that they comply with the laws and standards that are set in place by the AI Secretariat Office. And if the laws are not followed, then here are some of the actions or measures that AI takes in ensuring that human rights abuses are held accountable. And the measures are signing petitions, writing letters, doing online campaigns, and demonstrating peaceful protests against the abuses of human rights. And in doing so, they mobilize and support human rights activists in the areas where abuses occur so that justice is served fairly. A clear example of this function can be highlighted during the amendment of the death penalty in 2013 in PNG, where a lot of groups like churches join hands with AI to pressurize the government in abolishing this law. And through the work of AI, it was finally abolished on the 20th of January 2022, as stated by Sakai 2022. How is the sub-theory of liberalism connected or not connected to Amnesty International. 
In order to answer this question, first let us define the two theories, liberalism and its sub-theory, commercial liberalism. Let us begin by defining what is liberalism. According to Richardson 2017, page 104, liberalism is defined as a political theory that prizes individual freedom, and it is also believed that individuals should be free to do as they please without the interference of others, so long as they do not arm or limit the freedom of others. Having defined liberalism, now let us define its sub-theory, commercial liberalism. So what is commercial liberalism? According to Yagira Files 2022, it is stated that commercial liberalism promotes the idea of free trade and commerce across state borders on the assumption that economic interdependence among states will reduce incentives to use force and raise the cost of doing so. Given the two definitions, how are the theory of liberalism and its sub-theory connect or not connect to Amnesty International? Well, in short, it can be understood that through identifying the roles and functions of Amnesty International and the definition of the theories, we can see that the theory of liberalism is connected to AI but not its sub-theory. Because of the fact that the theory of liberalism is deeply rooted around the principles of freedom, human rights, reasons, and democracy. And as for commercial liberalism, it is not connected to AI because it focuses on establishing free trade relations between countries and not fighting for human rights. Thus, we can simply say that commercial liberalism is more to do with economics and it is not in line with what AI stands for. In conclusion, Amnesty International is an international non-governmental organization that works towards fighting against injustice and promoting human rights. And its three main roles of function plays a significant part in upholding the old spectrum of human rights through protecting and empowering people whose freedom and dignity are under threat. And lastly, to end this discussion, the idea of liberalism is in line with the roles and functions of AI, while the idea of commercial liberalism is not.